very much. Well, two years ago, I was in school, and um, I was close to my final exams. And I remember that night, it was April 18th, and I heard from the numbers in the news. They said that a wooden boat uh, with 800 people on board drowned, close to the Italian coast, and that there were only 28 people rescued. And, well, that was five months after the rescue, the governmental rescue operation Mare Nostrum had ended, and there was a lack of rescue vessels in the area, and there was a lack of help. So I thought, we need to do something. And especially because the public reaction, that in theory everyone said, there, there needs to be some changes. In future we need to avoid such tragedies. But in practice, and nothing really changed. Um, so I thought maybe we can do something. And, well, it wasn't the idea, yeah, now we buy a ship and then we start. Sometimes, I sometimes Googled like ships for sale, but there were only some, only some ferries from Bulgaria, which were more than a million euros. So um, I thought, I would make a try, and I tried it in, in May 2015, and uh, I called the shipyard, and I used like the strongest voice an 18 year old man can have, and I said, I want to buy a ship 20 meters long, where we can take 150 people on board. And there was no reply, because the man on the other side of the line realized that I had no idea what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. 150 people on a 20 meter vessel is not possible at all, but he didn't hang up. And in the next 30 minutes, he explained me about the constitution of rescue vessels, different type of rescue vessel, and so on and so on. And at the end, he gave me a number of an old experienced captain from Hamburg. And I met him and he liked the idea and we started. Yeah, my name is uh, Jakob Schön, I'm 20 years old and uh, I founded Jugendrettet in 2015. We are an organization which was founded and um, is managed by, by young people. What is young? Pup uh, pupils, students, below 30, let's say. <laughs> and yeah, we're working on a voluntary basis, we're independent and we are financed by, by donations. And we saved 8,000 lives. <laughs> the goals of Jugendrettet, first saving lives, and second involving other peoples in the idea how important it is, first of course to save lives, but second to create an awareness of the situation in the central Mediterranean Sea. Those are the two goals of Jugendrettet. But to get one step back, we started and, okay, we said, what do you need for saving lives? We need a ship, we need people, and we need a home port to operate from, and we need about 300,000 euros, and the best would be if we get them in the next six months, because we wanted to get started in summer, since the majority of people um, are crossing that route in, 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 in summer. But where did we have any experience? We had no experience and we had, yeah, we had a lack of experience, let's say. Um, where do you find a ship? On the internet, somehow eBay or, it was difficult. Where do you find the people who operate such a vessel? Maybe also on the internet. Homeport, we didn't know. Maybe we might had an idea of funds, where to maybe do some fundraising and raise some funds, but that was it. And. What we did was, yeah, we tried to call, to write emails to those people that we thought who might have an idea, who might have knowledge, who might have experience in those three parts of the project where we didn't have any. So we started getting in touch with the shipping industry, with universities who were specialized on nautical science. We got in touch, um, for example, with lawyers and, of course, the German Navy. And sooner or later we realized that the idea could actually work. And the key was 
that we didn't pretend to know anything or didn't try to do something, but to really ask for experience and for knowledge. And to be open and to say, yeah, well, we don't have any experience, but you have, and please, go on. So, but we had no people. I skip one back because the operational part worked, worked better and better. But we had no people, and we needed people. And so we somehow sat in the train and visited a bit of Germany. And yeah, I remember we sometimes had presentations like in southern Bavaria when, when no one was coming. And we, people donated like 10 euros. And it was already February, we wanted to get started in, in summer. But after a couple of weeks, people started to join. And that's what we call our ambassadors, young people who go to schools, who go to universities, who go to local businesses, spread the idea, and of course raise funds for our operation. Those are students from Liechtenstein, those are students from London, young people from Berlin. It's very mixed. But we got started and we raised money, we bought the vessel, we renovated it together, we brought it to Malta. And it was July 27th. Sorry. It was July 27th. We were out in the sea. And we were prepared. We had the, f the impression that we were prepared. We had prepared the operation for a year. We had prepared the vessel, the crew, the hospital, the doctors, the speedboats. But I was extremely nervous. And um, there was a minute where I thought, <laughs> hopefully we don't find any boats. Because <laughs> the idea actually came true. And um, yeah, to see it, to be on the sea was a new feeling. Two hours later, we had 450 people on board. We rescued the people from, ve from five to six wooden boats, 12 meters long, more than 150 people on it. Those people were injured. Some, we found two dead bodies, children, some families, young women, young men. Some were crying, some were praying, some were also laughing when they came on board. They came from Somalia, they came from Eritrea, they came from Nigeria. And that was the first rescue. But this is not our job. Young people, students, are not responsible for saving lives. It's the job of state actors. But somehow we feel responsible because no one other is doing the job. And for us, saving lives is a basic principle. It's a basic value of society which we think it's important to keep. So we decided that blaming others who might not do the job is not enough. But we have to take over responsibility and that's somehow the idea we follow. Thank you very much. Thank you.